So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code. Woof. It's Windows Pro time. Righto, tell you that champs now. Let's have the long-term review of all these laptops. My two favorites, XPS 15 and the uh, MacBook Pro 15. And we have the contender over here, which a lot of people have asked me, compare the Razer to the XPS 15, please. And I've been reticent to do it because it's like, it's a gaming laptop. Why are you asking me to compare that to a gaming laptop? Well, actually, it's very good for content creation too. So have a look at the latency monitor on the right hand side of the Razer there, which is on the right XPS in the 15 and the MacBook Pro is on the left. If you didn't know, um, yeah, you can see lots of green there. I am recording straight into it. If you don't believe me, there you can see I'm recording straight into it and the latency is like non-existent. This is like through the Claret and we 128 buffer there and it's pretty much instant. Oh, went into the red there. My compressor's not working that well. Um, yeah, you can see it is actually really excellent. Now I've been testing it for content creation. It's really good. But anyway, this is my long-term review of my two products, the XPS 15 and the MacBook Pro. And I will be chucking the Razer in here as well. Now the Razer isn't mine, it's actually a review unit. I'll put it in the long-term review because it's been bashed and crashed and slammed and tested and pretty sure Jared Tech had that one. And you know, when I got it, it was like smoking. You know when Jared's tested a laptop because it comes back smoking. In actual fact, I remember I got a Nook. I think I got it after Tech Yes City and Smell like WD-40, and I'm not even joking. I'm just going to talk about these laptops and how they hold up in the long term. And if you don't know, review units get slammed. They get the battery drained to zero. They have like every torture test done to them. And I reckon three months in the life of a review unit is like a year of normal use. Now, when it comes to the XPS 15 and the MacBook Pro, they are the best of laptops. They are the worst of laptops. In all seriousness, you know, they're the ones I choose. And that speaks volumes that, you know, I review all these laptops that are, you know, that Razer over there has an RTX 2080 Max-Q in it. And wow, I mean, yeah, I get jealous a bit, <laughs> you know, looking at those gaming laptops and they've got those sort of specs. But interestingly, the MacBook Pro and the XPS 15 can have an i9. That Razer doesn't have an i9 option. So in terms of performance, in terms of content creation, really there's not that much difference. They're all good for content creation. Gaming, of course, the Razer's going to win here. It's like a no contest. Now, could I use a Razer as a content creation device? Yeah, the Mercury one. The Mercury white one, I could definitely, not the black one. And even the XPS 15, they both fingerprint magnets. And that's one of the downsides of the XPS 15 and this Razer. You know, they just look grubby after a while. I do wish the XPS 15 had the white deck that the XPS 13 has, and that'll be friggin' amazing. For me, in terms of looks and build quality, all three of these are superb, and I could rock all of them. Of course, the Razer would have to be that mercury white one, and that's why I like the XPS 15 the MacBook Pro, because as shallow as it is, I want my device to be premium. I want it to look good, feel good. It just That's what these two laptops have over some of the gaming laptops, which, you know, to be perfectly frank, some of them, just the design just doesn't float my boat. As I said, I have been reticent to compare the Razer to these two because it is a gaming laptop. And the reason being is because the MacBook Pro is probably the most important laptop in this segment. Now, hold on, before you go nuts, hold on, just bear with me. The reason is, it's like Rolex, all right? Rolex is the most important watch in the industry. It's not the best watch. There are plenty of watches better than Rolex. There are plenty of watches, not as good, but it's the most important because everything is measured by the Rolex. You're either better than Rolex or you're not as good, or maybe you're on an equal footing there. That's how it is with the MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro was the benchmark in 15 inch premium sort of content creator laptops. It was the first, many people say the 215 is the GOAT of 15 inch premium laptops. And I guess it would have claims to that, but it's what the XPS 15 aspired to be. When the XPS 15 came out, it was clearly the Windows equivalent of the MacBook Pro. It tried to be that. Now, I would argue that the XPS 15 from 2015 should be the benchmark in this sort of category. But remember, everything is still being measured off the MacBook Pro. Now, between the MacBook Pro and the XPS 15, it's so hard to choose because they are both awesome machines and they both have their pros and cons. I've 
you know, compared to many times before. But the reason I was never going to put the Razor in this company is because of this. I mean, that is the Asus Zephyrus. That is probably the best thin and light premium gaming laptops in terms of gaming performance. That is what the Razer is competing against. It's not trying to be measured against the MacBook Pro, although they do try to market it against the MacBook Pro as a creator's device as well. So it is sort of halfway in between. It's not like that Zephyrus. That Zephyrus is just gaming first and there's no compromises in that. With the Razer, they actually did try and, you know, put it in between. So I think... Yeah, you can sort of compare it to these laptops. In actual fact, they actually have a campaign. It's called Made by Razor. No, Built by Blade or Made by Blade. Made by Blade. Hashtag Made by Blade. And I've actually seen studios using Razor laptops uh, to produce music. I mean, one of Post Malone's videos, you'll see there in the studio, there's a Razor laptop. They blur out the thing. They blur out the logo, but it is a Razor laptop. And you can see there, it's the only Windows laptop I've seen that's got green on the monitor. So in terms of recording audio, I think it's probably the best one. It's even better than the XPS 15. And now I am using ASIO drivers in it now, but I haven't seen a Windows laptop that has green. So it's no joke. You can do stuff on the blade. Now, you may not be able to hear this now, but I can hear the fan. It's on its default mode, which is balanced, but I can actually slightly hear the fan. It was actually louder than the fan on the XPS 15 when I'm recording the audio. And that's what's good about the MacBook Pro and the XPS 15. They're super quiet when you're recording. Now the Razer fan has actually just gone off now and I will forgive it slightly because it is actually charging at the moment. But I guess considering its audio performance, yeah, it should definitely be considered as a content creation device as well. And in terms of gaming laptops, it's not that loud compared to other gaming laptops. Certainly the XPS 15, the MacBook Pro are quieter, but the Blade is pretty quiet for a gaming laptop. The only downside... I guess for me as a content creator, stopping me sort of maybe from buying the Razer would be the battery life. Now, don't look at the display that has the 240 Hz display. You can get the OLED display on the Razer. So it's not going to look as good as the XPS 15's display because it's got a 4K display there. So don't judge by how the displays look now. But with the 4K display on the Razer, you're only going to get around four, five hours, something like that with the 4K display, whereas the XPS 15 and the MacBook Pro, you're going to get up around the 10 hours. If you put the brightness on the XPS up a bit, yeah, you probably get about eight. But, you know, you're getting eight, 10 hours compared to, you know, five hours. There's a big difference in battery life. And battery life is like high on the list of things I really need in my laptop. It's actually more important to me than gaming. It's got to be beautiful. It's got to be nice. It's got to have battery life. It's got to not deafen me. And, you know, third on my priority list is gaming. If gaming was first, of course you're going to get the Razer. Now, I will say with the XPS 15 and the MacBook Pro, the Mac looks very dainty, looks delicate, looks sort of, you know, elegant and stuff like that. But that Mac is friggin' tough. I've got to tell you, I slammed that thing and I slammed the last model, the A218 model, like for six months and it friggin' held up, no problems. Actually, I wish I didn't sell that and get this 8-core one. And actually, I wouldn't buy a MacBook Pro one of these at the moment because we know the new one's coming probably in October. With the XPS 15, we know by Dell's roadmap, probably February next year is the next XPS 15. So I think it's safe to buy the XPS 15. By the way, the next XPS 15 next year, on the roadmap, it's said it's going to be using a 1650. So I think the only change here may be a redesign of the XPS 15, maybe dropped in the 10th generation uh, CPUs if they have them ready. With the MacBook Pro, it's getting updated next month. And you can expect with that MacBook Pro, it's going to come with Wi-Fi 6, 16-inch display. It might even be a HDR display, hopefully better thermals. And that's the thing. All right, do I wish the thermals were better on the MacBook Pro and the XPS 15? Yes, I do. And the Razer thermals are better. There's no doubt about that. But it gets the job done and it does what I need and I can game. Whereas, say, with the Razer... It's going to tick all those boxes of getting the job done. It looks good enough. The usability is great and all that. But I'm going to still have a bit of battery anxiety with that. Overall, when it comes to the XPS 15 and the MacBook Pro, I can't highly recommend these laptops enough. They are the two best in this category. Even a ZenBook Pro Duo with the dual display. Yeah, it's cool and all, but I'd rather have these two laptops. Pretty much all the problems with the Dell have been fixed. The sleep issue is still there with the Dell and the T2 issues are still there with the Mac. So it'll be awesome if they 
fix those things. Other than that, they're pretty much nailed on solid laptops. They're worth buying. The Razer could be considered in this as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's just me talking, rambling on about, you know, long-term review of these products and all three of these are excellent for content creation. The benefits of the Razer is, yeah, it's going to game like a freaking beast, um, and it does. But you can still game on the Mac and the XPS 15. I will say the only downside about the gaming on the Mac is you have to boot into Windows and stuff like that unless you're playing a native Mac game. And also, you know, the throttling issues when you're using Windows are sort of there. It's going to boost up and just go nuts and then throttle down. The best experience with the Mac for gaming is with an eGPU really is i will test these with these gpus if you want to know three of the best three of the best here uh catch you in the next one guys tally ho